If you've seen my other videos, usually what I do when I start a word problem is I read through the word problem to get the whole thing going. I'm not going to do that in this case because there's a lot to read through here, and I will read through it when the time comes, but I want to talk about how I'm actually going to approach this problem. Chapter 6 probability word problems are the most challenging thing you're going to face on your first exam, and I want to bring up this uh, this part A here right away because this is typically what they ask you to do at the beginning. They usually say construct either a two-way probability table or the tree. My suggestion is this. Don't do one or the other. You're going to need to do both of them. Now I know that when people are writing these exams they don't have a lot of time, but doing both of these is really going to be the key to not only being able to solve this uh, and be certain that your answer is correct, but also once you've practiced this a few times, it will make the process go faster than trying to just do the table or just do the tree. So I'm going to step aside or step away from this question for a moment and show you how it is that I actually go through and uh, what sort of steps I go through for solving not only this but any kind of a, of a probability word problem. You can apply this method that I'm going to show you to even the most challenging uh, questions from the Bayes theorem section at the end of chapter 6. Um, so let's have a look at, or let me clear out some room here and then I'll, uh, I'll show you how that works. When you're going through a word problem, so I'll just label this as being for chapter 6 word problems. The very first step is going to be um, the most challenging step and the most important step. And it's very simply reading through the problem, reading through the setup, and what you have to do is you have to identify given conditional probabilities. Usually there's more than one, um, but there's going to be at least one in there. So you have to identify given conditional probabilities. You're not going to be calculating anything. These will be given. The whole point is you're going to be looking for this kind of a probability. And this is a little bit tricky to understand if you haven't spent much time with this chapter. Conditional probabilities are probabilities that very simply do not always apply. They apply only to a certain group. Of people, group B people, or um, they only un they only apply under uh, this condition. That's why they're called conditional probabilities. Okay, so um, let me give you an example to make sense of this. If I was to say that uh, the probability that person that you see uh, walking through the university is going to write their exam today, if I say the probability that um, they're writing their exam, given that they're a stat student, is 60%, that this probability doesn't apply to every student that you see. It only applies to stat students. What I said is the probability that somebody is writing their exam, given that they're a stat student, is 60%. Maybe that's because 60% of stat students have to write their exam today, but maybe there are no other exams for any other courses. So this only applies to stat students. Whereas if I just said the probability of a student writing an exam today is 60%, that applies to all students. That's not a conditional probability. Here I said that there's a group that this applies to. Here there's no group that this applies to. Conditional probabilities might might be different for different groups. So for example, the probability that somebody is bald, given that they're male, well, maybe that's about 10 or 15 percent. Whereas the probability that somebody is bald, given that they're female, is maybe 0.001 percent. So conditional probabilities can help to differentiate between two groups who have two different probabilities. You're going to see this in your wording of, uh, of the question. So, for example, in our question we're going to be looking at uh, the chance that somebody has a certain app installed, whether or not they got into an accident in the past year. What it is that we have to identify is whether the, the probabilities that are being given in words only apply to one group or another. 
if that's the case, those are going to be conditional probabilities. And we have to be able to write them out like this. The B part is who it applies to. You can think about this as being which group. You can think about this part, the A part, as what is it that we're talking about. So if I said the probability that somebody has an app installed, the app is called a telematics app in this question, so that's why I'm using T. The probability that somebody has the telematics app given that they were in, in, in an accident in the past year is going to be 70%. Uh, that's what it turns out to be in this question. So this is who it applies to. Only the people who got into an accident in the last year. And this is the what. The what is, what is the probability or 70% chance, there's a 70% chance that what happened? They got the app. Who are they? That they got into an accident. So 70% chance of somebody having the app given that they are people who got into an accident. You have to be able to read through the wording and put things into, put probabilities into these terms. If you can identify even just one conditional probability, that's going to be your very first step taken care of. After that, things are pretty straightforward. Now, when I say pretty straightforward, that doesn't mean that they're going to be quick and easy. It just means that there's not going to be very much for you to decide. So after your very first step, the, first, the second step is going to be that you draw the tree, the probability tree. Now, I said that you're going to be better off by not only drawing the tree, but also constructing the table. And the reason I said that is because you really, um, if you get the table constructed, and if you do it properly, like I'm going to show you, it's going to make this last bit super easy. Solve all of your questions. using, uh, that doesn't make sense, using the formulas from the chapter, solve all of your question using the formulas, and the formulas are going to require that you know um, joint probabilities, probabilities that look like this, probability of A and B, and marginal probabilities, probability of B, this sort of a thing. So. The final step that we're working towards is to solve any questions we might be given, that we might be asked, using the formulas from the chapter. Formulas from the chapter require that you know these kinds of probabilities. Well, constructing a table will list all of these probabilities, so it'll make it super easy to do, to do any solutions as long as you've got the table there to work from. But the table depends on having your tree set up properly. You can try and jump to a table without doing the tree first, which some people like to do because they don't like drawing the probability trees, but I'm going to show you how drawing the tree is straightforward as long as you've gotten through this first step. So identify your conditional probabilities. That'll help you draw the tree. Once you've drawn the tree, you're going to have everything that you need to put into this table, which is going to be all of your joint and all of your marginal probabilities. Once you've done that, you're going to be able to quickly fly through all of your questions that they might ask you. So how does all of this work? Well, if you finish step one, if you've identified at least one conditional probability, then drawing the tree is easy because whatever it is that is the who part of this conditional probability, that has to automatically be, uh, be dealt with at the first part of the tree. So, does somebody fall into the category of B or not B? That's how the tree has to start. So if you've set up your given probability correctly, if you've identified it correctly and written it out in this way, then that will be the first branch of your tree. The second branch is going to be the what part, the part that's left to chance. So whether or not they have the app, T or not T, T or not T, given that we came this route. Sorry, I'm I'm mixing up uh, my T's and my A's. Okay, so I'll call this A and not A, A and not A. So we uh, we have to establish B or not B first, and then we can talk about A 
or not A. Second. Notice that this is given B in both cases because we've come this route. If we've come this route where it's not B, then that's going to be given once we're at this part of the tree. The whole point of drawing a tree is to get joint probabilities. Joint probabilities come from following the different paths through the tree. So for example, here's a path, one unique path through the tree. This will give me the probability of B and A, because that's what I've seen B and A along that path. Here, it'll be B and not A. Here it's going to be not B and A, and here it's going to be not B and not A. Once I've worked this out, with, and we'll do this with numbers when we get into the question, I'll have every joint probability. That's what the tree is, or sorry, that's what the table keeps track of for me. So this would be A, not A, this will be B, not B. All that I'm going to do in these boxes is I'm just going to take these joint probabilities that I've worked out here on the tree and I'm going to put them into these boxes. So this would be right here, this would be the probability of B and A. So this one would go in there. And then over here this is going to be not B and A. So not B and A. Over here I'm going to have B and not A, and then here it's going to be not B and not A. So when I'm constructing the table, all that I'm doing is I'm just reorganizing information that I've already got. There's going to be a little bit of new added information, however, if you were to add across this row here, like if this was a, if I know the number or the numerical value of this probability and this probability, if you add them together, you will get the total probability of A. Here I would get the total probability of not A. If I add down my columns, I'll have the total probability of B, the total probability of not B. These ones on the outside, or the margins, these are called marginal probabilities. So con constructing the table means you've listed all joint and and all marginal probabilities. That's what the table does. It just keeps track of all of your joint and marginal probabilities. That sets us up to do part four, where we're going to solve our questions using the formulas, and the formulas depend only on having all joint and marginal probabilities. So this all starts with step number one, which is properly identifying conditional probabilities. Then we can carry through finding or drawing the tree, constructing the, uh, the, the table, and finally answering all of our questions using the formulas from this chapter. So that's, what it, that's where I'm going to start in the next video. I'm going to read through the problem and identify conditional probabilities to get this whole process started.